welcome to master med academy if you are new to my channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates and future videos today i'm going to be talking about innate immunity part 2 if you haven't watched part 1 i would recommend you guys to watch the part 1 and continue with this video so let's start so what are the general features of innate immunity we have two principal types of reactions mediated by innate immunity we have inflammation and also antiviral defense inflammation consists of activation and recruitment of leukocytes at the site of infection and tissue injuries antiviral defense is mediated by nkc nkc means natural killer cells which kills virus infected cells and by cytokines called type 1 interferon which will block the viral replication within the host cells pathogen associated molecular pattern ie pamp now before we go through this slide let me take you guys to the whiteboard so guys let me name this whiteboard as the war zone we have two teams here so let me draw team number a which is team bacteria i'm really sorry for my drawings i know they are really ugly but please try to understand the sketch and believe me when i say that this is a bacteria and this is not a mouse now let me name this team as team bacteria now of course we have the opposing team here the team that i support this is team macrophage now if you have seen any war movie like lord of the rings which i love teams they like to hold up their flags high enough to show the enemy who they are so using the same analogy our bacteria likes to hold up its own flag now let me name this flag as pamp now what is a pamp pathogen associated molecular pattern so this is like a flag of the bacteria now we have many types of flags or many types of pamps now for my example i'm going to name this flag as lps lps stands for lipopolysaccharide if you have watched my previous video innate immunity part 1 i told lipopolysaccharide belongs to which class of bacteria yes you guessed it right it's gram negative bacteria so now i can write with confidence that okay this is gram negative bacteria now macrophages they love to look and they use their big telescopes to look so they use telescopes to look at the enemy's flag and understand okay we have to be prepared for this kind of bacteria now let me name this telescope as p r r pattern recognition receptor we also have many types of prrs but for my example i'm going to use tlr4 this is called tall like receptor 4 we also have another type of receptors called nod receptors or nod like receptors of course macrophages also have cd14 on their surface right so gram negative bacteria holding its flag is charging towards macrophage now macrophage after looking through the tall like receptor 4 telescope sends a transcription signal to the nucleus and nf kappa b is formed now nf kappa b is responsible for production of cytokines now we have many types of cytokines but since this is an inflammatory process i can give you an example that we have a tuber necrotic factor alpha this is a pro inflammatory cytokine now cytokines will lead to a cascade of processes 
and that would lead to killing of gram negative bacteria so i hope you understand the cycle here now when the gram negative bacteria dies it's broken into pieces now macrophages have the ability to look through another telescope this broken pieces now i won't call this broken pieces as a pamp but it's called dams damage associated molecular pattern so the story began when the bacteria was holding up its lps flag the macrophage looked through the telescope tlr4 and sent a signal transcription signal to form the nf kappa b and that released pro inflammatory cytokines which led to a cascade of processes and killed the gram negative bacteria now here i've answered a few step questions they may ask you okay what kind of prr does the macrophage utilize to look at the lps of a gram negative bacteria the answer is tau like receptor 4 they can ask you okay what is the transcription signal and what is that molecule formed the answer is nf kappa b now i have a question for you guys can you name me a drug which inhibits nf kappa b as well as it inhibits phospholipase a2 yes you guessed it right it's a glucocorticosteroid or corticosteroids also important for step exams so glucocorticosteroids when it inhibits nf kappa b it leads to immunosuppression and if you inhibit phospholipase a2 it leads to suppression of inflammation so i hope you guys understood the war zone theory here and you have some idea now what is a pamp what is a prr what are their roles and why is it important to us so let's go back and read the text what i say here so i say that pamps are molecules that are present on pathogens and shared by microbes of the same type they are not present on host cells we don't have pamps we have prrs you remember the telescopes we have telescopes we don't have flags the receptor of innate immunity that recognizes pamps are pattern recognition receptor and in our example it was tall like receptor 4 innate immunity also recognizes the damaged particles known as damage associated molecular patterns the receptor of innate immunity are germline encoded very high yield to know for your step exams while the receptors of adaptive immunity they are not germline encoded they are rather made through vdj recombination and rag gene i will explain all this in future videos regarding adaptive immunity but for now you have to remember that germline encoded receptors belong to innate immunity also identical receptors are expressed on all of the cells of a particular type such as macrophages pattern recognition receptors or prrs include tau like receptors tau like receptors activate transcription factors that stimulate cytokines nf kappa b is the most important transcription factor that gets activated by tlrs nod like receptors and inflammasome are another type of prrs they recognize the dams and pams in the cytoplasm three most important nlrs are basically nod 1 nod 2 nlrp3 gain of function in nlrp3 are the cause of rare auto inflammatory syndromes now what are the different examples of pams in our example the war zone we had our bacteria raising the flag of lps but i want to tell you guys that it is not the only type of flag there are many type of flags so let's go through them lipopolysaccharide tau like receptor 4 is specific for bacterial lps present in gram negative bacteria it binds cd14 on macrophages and triggers cytokine production very high yield points i have marked and put them in a small box you need to remember tau like receptor 4 and cd14 peptidoglycans is another type of pamp 
Tau-like receptor 2 recognizes peptidoglycan cell wall in bacteria. Nod 1 and Nod 2 are specific for peptidoglycans. Like LPS, they also trigger cytokine production. The next is the lipotechoic acid. Very high yield to remember that lipotechoic acid is present only in gram-positive bacteria. Also, lipotechoic acid loves to induce tumor necrotic factor alpha and interleukin-1. So the next is mannose on bacteria or yeast. Mannose is a sugar. It's a sugar molecule. It binds the mannose binding lectin, MBL, from liver. It activates the lectin pathway of complement, not the classical pathway, but the lectin pathway. The next is unmethylated CPG DNA. Tall like receptor 9 recognizes this type of DNA. Double stranded RNA is recognized by tall like receptor 3 and 7. Inflammation. Inflammation is a biological response of body tissue against harmful stimuli like pathogens or damaged cells that intend to recruit circulating cells and proteins to side off infection and tissue damage. What are the five classical signs of inflammation? Heat, in Latin is called calor, pain, dolor, redness, rubor, swelling, tumor, loss of function, functio lesa. Recruitment of leukocytes. There is a huge process of how leukocytes are being recruited. But before we go through the text, let me take you guys to a diagram where I can explain you better and it's easier to understand. So, leukocyte recruitment. Now, this is a leukocyte here. Let's imagine that this is a neutrophil. Now, the first step is rolling. Usually, in the blood circulation, neutrophils and other cells are swimming normally. When there is an infection or when there is a trauma or there is an injury, we require neutrophils to mediate and start the process of inflammation. Now, neutrophils exhibit a molecule known as Cialil Lewis X glycoprotein on its cell surface. Now that will bind selectin molecules expressed by endothelial cells. And in this case, it's the P-selectin and E-selectin. So Cialil Lewis X glycoprotein on neutrophil surface will bind P-selectin or E-selectin on endothelial surface. Now this binding causes the neutrophil to start to roll on the walls of the endothelium. This is called rolling process. Now the next process is the action of integrins. Now neutrophils will express integrins and that will bind the integrin ligand on the endothelial cells which is known as ICAM1, very important to know. So integrins will bind ICAM1 expressed by endothelial cells that causes a process known as stable adhesion. Stable adhesion is also called crawling. So crawling, stable adhesion, same thing. Then the next process requires the neutrophil to transmigrate. So for the process of transmigration, we require a molecule called PCAM1. Very high yield to know. So after transmigration, the neutrophil will come and sit here. Obviously, neutrophils have eyes. No, right? Because neutrophils have, they don't possess eyes. They can't see. So the story doesn't end here. The neutrophil still has to make its way to the site of the inflammation. Now, since neutrophils can't see here and there, so how do you guys imagine the neutrophil to go to the precise site of infection. Yes, you guessed it right. We need chemoattractants. So chemoattractants like C5A or Calicrane. These are the examples of chemoattractants. At the site of inflammation, chemoattractants will be secreted and neutrophils are good sniffers. They will sniff the chemoattractant and reach to the site of inflammation. So that is the journey of a neutrophil from the blood circulation going through endothelial surface to the site of inflammation. So let's see what I say in my text. So I say that the first step is rolling of leukocytes. 
Cialyl Lewis X is a ligand for selectin molecules expressed by endothelial cells. You need to remember this, Cialyl Lewis X ligand. It's very high yield for step boards. Next is, it loves to bind E-selectin or P-selectin on endothelial cells. Second process is firm adhesion or crawling. Integrity are expressed by neutrophils. It's not integrity, it's integrins. Sorry for the spelling mistake. It's integrins that are expressed by neutrophils. Now, they bind the ICAM-1 on endothelial cells. Very important to remember, ICAM-1. Transmigration process involves neutrophils binding PCAM-1 between endothelial cells. So in a nutshell, we have Cialyl Lewis X binding E selectin or P selectin. Firm adhesion involves integrin binding to ICAM on endothelial cells and transmigration involves neutrophil binding to PCAM1 molecule. Migration to the site of inflammation. Now opsonin. We have an IgG opsonin that binds the neutrophil. We also have chemokines, very high yield to remember for step exams. Which chemokines are responsible for neutrophil chemo attraction? And the answer is C5A, interleukin 8, leukotriene B4, calicrine. You have to put this in your hippocampus as it is. Sooner or later, you will be asked somewhere the chemokines. Inherited deficiencies in integrity and selectin ligand. Again, it's integrin, it's not integrity. Leads to the defective leukocyte recruitment to sites of infection and increased susceptibility to infections. Now, disorders like these are called leukocyte adhesion deficiencies. Antiviral defense. Type 1 interferons inhibit viral replication and cells become resistant to infection. Plasma cytoid neurotic cells of the innate immunity secrete type 1 interferons when activated by toll like receptor. NKC also play a major role in eliminating virus infected cells. Interferon alpha and interferon beta are typically type 1 interferons. We use interferon treatment for many diseases like chronic HBV, Kaposi sarcoma, multiple sclerosis, and hairy cell leukemia. Microbial evasion of innate immunity. This is the last slide. So let me explain exactly what this is. So pathogen like pneumococci, staphylococci, streptococci, pseudomonas have become really good hackers of innate immunity. They have found a way to evade our innate immunity and protect themselves. Now, what is that protection mechanism or what is that hack that they found? Obviously, there are not like IT workers, but still, we need to know the hacks. So, pneumococci has capsular polysaccharide that inhibits phagocytosis by macrophages. Staphylococci has catalase enzyme, which breaks the reactive oxygen species. ROS stands for reactive oxygen species. And that leads to formation of water and oxygen which is really not harmful. You think water and oxygen is harmful for bacteria? No. Streptococci has an M protein that blocks the C3 binding to organism and complement receptor. Pseudomonas have a modified lipopolysaccharide that resists peptide antibiotics. And that's all for part two of innate immunity. If you like this video, uh, please like this video, press the bell icon and subscribe to my channel if you are new here. And thank you for your attention. Goodbye.